Hello there and welcome back to Zeberia, the world before. We are about to enter this tent and find out who the dead frozen bodies are and I can't wait, I'm very curious. Okay, which one first? Let's take a look at this one. That's not Dana in this body bag. Because it's a man. White man, brown hair, about 50 years of age. Could that be Leon? No, I think Leon should be... Oh, wait, no. Yeah. Of 50 years when he died. Oh. There is every reason to believe that this is the body of Harold Exner. Exner was to be exfiltrated by Leon Kobatis, whose remains are also thought to be among the frozen bodies. During a resistance operation, the party was probably swept away by an am avalanche in the mid-1940s. So that's the guy we accidentally killed as Leon. Okay. What about this? Oh no! That's him! That looks like him! White man around 30, fair hair, body in an exceptional state of preservation after being trapped in ice for many decades, probably died in an avalanche in the mid-1940s. Everything indicates that this is the body of alpinist and resistance fighter Leon Kobatis, reported missing during a delicate exfiltration operation. His identity should be confirmed by further analysis and a visual identification expected to take place soon. Okay, I just um, found out where my thinking mistake was, why I was so confused by the timeline and why the bodies are here and not in Baltaya. Well, he came back from Baltaya, right, after the expedition and Leon. And then he was a resistance fighter in Wagen. And I guess they went to the mountains here somehow, some because of some reason. We hopefully gonna find out and that's when they died there okay i think i think now i got it and i'm actually it looks like it looks like leon leon it's as if he died yesterday like in those stories where people are found perfectly preserved in ice for decades well, after being carried sad. away by an avalanche <sighs> hard to believe he's been dead for over 60 years that's quite amazing. And grim at the same time. I think there would be... I thought there would be a happy ending. Okay, now the woman... An unidentified blonde woman in her 40s. That can't be Dana. Dana wasn't blonde. White female, blonde hair with blue eyes, between 40 and 50 years of age. Due to lack of evidence, her identity is impossible to determine with certitude. However, given the presumed identity of the two other bodies found in the eyes, there is every reason to believe that this person participated in the resistance operation that was probably swept away by an avalanche in the mid-1940s. Okay. That's it, Oscar. Dana's body is not among those found with Leon's. Oh, what a relief. Now that that's cleared up, Kate Walker, maybe we should take shelter within somewhat more solid premises. Right. We should go and check on Demoiselle Lenny in the refuge. I have a lot of new questions for her. And she was probably devastated because... Um, Lenny, I mean... Because she saw Leon's body and she was kind of in love with him or something. Looks like the rescuers left in a hurry after they moved the bodies here. Must have been surprised by the blizzard. Yeah, but I don't know, it's so disappointing that Leon died after all. I was actually hoping... Dana and him, they will end up together and have a happy life. Until they died. Or maybe we will, like, that we even meet them, you know, later on in the game, but... 
Moment. Hm. Not this time. So. Uh, hello? Sir? Are you sure you want to follow that? That oh, I individual, got... Kate Walker? I don't think he looked threatening. Rather the opposite, Oscar. That looked like an automaton. Is it... Is it Oscar's body, or...? Oh my god. <laughs> this didn't really look like Oscar, I don't know. She's asleep. I'd better go and talk to that guy in the other room. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go after him in just a moment. <laughs> what? Who is that? It's our stalker, I think. That's the one we saw uh, hiding in the trees. It's locked. Sir? Are you there? Hmm. Where did he go? What have we got here? Wait, is it that that uh, monkey-like uh, snowman that they found? Wait, what? The meeting. That was like a dead animal, no? Two people and a dead animal. Brothers and sisters in arms. Birding city. Looks a little bit like these um, cave paintings. The journey on a boat and on a plane. Yeah, these look like these um, Among Us. He lived, that's Leon probably, and he was living with those snow people. After he had to hide and run away, observe this the drawing. portrait. It looks like Leon. Yeah, the style that's him. reminds me of that other portrait of him that he described in his letter from Baltayar. The one made by the. <gasps> Dana. The Gorun. No, not Dana. She's old like me. Ludwig. I'm Kate. Kate Walker. Kate Walker. Yes. And you are. You're the one that Leon saved during the Origin Expedition a long time ago, aren't you? Yes. The Gorin from Baltayar. Well, you've come a long way, Mr. Ludwig. Ludwig Hartak. Well, Mr. Ludwig, if you don't mind my asking, what happened when you and Leon returned to Ostertal to join the Resistance fighters? And how did you meet Dana? He's the smoker. 
Oh, he was there all the time. We found his the cigarettes. Leon, my brother. These drawings, they're moments from your life, aren't they? Hmm. Is that when you met Dana? No. no. Oh, I have to guess the right thing. I have to ask the right question. Your parents now rescued by Leon, right? Looks like a river. And that little figure looks wounded. Is that you when you met Leon and the scientist from the Origin Expedition? Yes. That person in the middle of the others was in the other paintings. That's Leon, isn't it? Yes. Leon. That group. Is it your tribe, Mr. Ludwig? Yeah. So you all live together in a cave in Baltayar? Right. So you and your tribe took Leon in after the death of Reinhard Berger in 1937. That's how he was able to survive the winter in the mountains. Then you went with Leon when he decided to return to Wagen to join the resistance fighters? Mm -hmm. These combat scenes, are they of the liberation of Wagen? Before, during resistance. Had Dana already joined the resistance operation by that time? I mean, by the time shown in the drawing? No, later. The blonde girl with you and Leon can't be Lenny, right? Yes. Lenny, my sister. I knew Lenny was a resistance fighter, but she never told me she fought alongside Leon, let alone you. She even went as far as saying that she never saw Leon again after 1937. When they all met at the refuge with Dana. Why would she hide something so important? Time to check on Lenny. Come, Kate Walker. Well, he was walking when we saw him first in the corridor. It looked like a, like Oscar in his other body, the way he was walking. The sketchbook? I think it was Leon's. Expeditions before 1937, but we saw this already. Living among the Gorons. The clandestine return to Wagen. Wagen during the occupation. The, the Edelweiss network. That's Ludwig. Last night I had the most beautiful dream. 
portrait of Leon die the Goron back the room okay old spool of wire detonating wire just like in the old movies Have you seen this man? Terrorist even. Um, 10,000 marks. Reward for information leading to the capture, dead or alive of one Ludwig Hartek, as, uh, better known as the Mountain Murderer. Wanted for murder, dead or alive, he is part of the worst band of rogues Wagen has ever known. Some kind of map. Looks like the devil passed to me. Could could all those marks indicate where the Gorin searched for Leon's body? Where did he search for the body? This symbol looks like a warning. These must be plans for secret operations. Must have been some kind of a headquarters here. Maybe for local resistance fighters such as Leon and his group. Weapons. Must have been here since the war, I guess. Mm. The super resistant does not exist. Old propaganda posters. So much happened to the Gorun since Leon found him in Baltayar. What a life he had. But there are still so many gray areas. I need to learn more from Demoiselle Lenny now. God. It's like so much new um, details and information to the story. Like, quite complex, I have to say. Ah, Fraulein. I knew you would be back eventually. Judging by your face, you and Ludwig already met. We have. And it raised a lot of questions about you. About what you said to me the first time we met, and about what you didn't say. Of course. You can run from your past, but never truly escape it. <laughs> But you already know that, don't you, Fraulein? Why the dramatic music? What's going on? You've been lying on... Is she... Is she Dana? No, oh my god, I don't know. I'm confused. You've been lying by omission all along, Demoiselle Lenny. What has she been lying about? About Leon's death, about fighting in the resistance with him, about the... Go about Mr. Ludwig, and I want to know why. Because it would have only begged questions. Questions which lead to events that I've never spoken about to anyone. Not even to you, dear Ludwig. Lenny. Still, I suppose it, it doesn't matter now. Perhaps it's time I confess my crime. What are you talking about? It was the best years of my life. Joining the resistance, unlike my coward of a father, and fighting alongside Leon after he miraculously got back from Baltayar with Ludwig. It gave me purpose. Wagen Mountains, Silberspiegel Refuge, summer 1944. Okay. Leon was a terrific leader. I could feel he was finally taking me seriously, especially with Dana being missing. 
I knew he was still in love. After all, didn't he cross the globe to rescue her? But we all thought he arrived too late, that Dana had died with her parents during the pogroms. So, I believed his mourning would eventually come to an end. And that's when Dana fell from the sky, literally. Dana was sent by London, right? To oversee that operation led by your resistance network? The exfiltration of a civilian to Switzerland, if I recall correctly. Indeed. But Leon never told us that Dana was involved. Maybe he was afraid to believe it himself. You should have seen them, Fraulein. It was as if they had never left each other. Do you know if... if Dana ever mentioned a child? Maybe they were planning to have one in Baltaya. Who knows? In Baltaya? Yes. That's all they ever talked about. How they were going to live over there after the war, along with Ludwig and his tribe. But he can't have children anymore, they said. But it was to be just another broken dream. Right. I should call London now. My radio's downstairs. Talk to your allies before using the radio. Set the radio. Leon's drawing book. I recognize the mountains of Wagen in these drawings. Leon must have drawn them during his expeditions in the region. These drawings date from the summer we met, when I worked here. These landscapes don't look like they're from the Wagen region. Leon must have done these drawings when he was in Baltaya with the Origin expedition. This is a drawing of the Gorons. Hey.
June 20th, 1944. Dear diary, not long now before I embark on my mission, so I thought I'd jot down a few thoughts to try to unwind a little. It's been a few months now that I first found out that Leon is alive, and yet I still can hardly believe it's true. Anyway, tomorrow I'll be dropped over the mountains of Wagen. I'll be joining Leon and his resistance group at the Silberspiegel Refuge. Funny, that's exactly where we first met, where it all began between us. Herr Gustav will have left and the place will have been abandoned, only being used as an outpost for the local resistance groups. I ought to feel nervous because of the airdrop, but that's not what worries me at all. Actually, I'm feeling anxious because of the reunion with Leon. Will you remember me? I know that London has informed him I'm the one who's been mandated to supervise the mission, but there's no way of knowing how Leon feels about it. Will he still love me? Should I talk about Anna? Or should I spare him the pain of knowing about that awful tragedy? I'd better get some sleep and I need to keep focused on the mission. The civilian I have to escort into Switzerland is essential to the war effort and therefore to the struggle against the brown shadow. That's what I need to be thinking about right now, not about Leon. But all the same, Leon, after all this time, and what if... Okay. Herr Gustav housed me here when I worked at the refuge. I have so many fond memories with Leon here. When I left for London with Junta, I never thought I'd see the place again, let alone be here again with Leon. Okay, I think the radio is uh, on the attic, in the attic. Yeah, but we're supposed to talk to our... Judging by these installations, LA. Leon's network seems particularly well organized. Pity the same can't be said for all the resistance networks the foreign office deals with. May I? The Gorun described Leon as his brother. They must have shared lots of adventures together since Leon saved him from the clutches of Herberger. Lenny and the Gorun seemed close. It's nice that she's found a friend. Not that Herr Gustav lacked affection for her, but she spent too much time alone in that refuge. True brothers and sisters in arms. You can sense that the three of them stand together as one. Your drawings are beautiful. For you, Dana Rose. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ludwig. It's almost as if you were there with us that night. Leon told me. Did he speak about me? All the time. I should go now. Talk to you later, Mr. Ludwig. Mm -hmm. oh, it looks like Leon and me in this drawing. The Goron must have drawn it from Leon's accounts of us. Oh, it's that moment uh, at the sunset on the balcony. If this propaganda against the resistance fighters is anything to go by, the brown shadow must be pretty desperate. Another terrorist sabotage perpetrated by the White Army. Looks like the Goron must be a nightmare for the brown shadow. He must be the super resistant I heard so much about in London. The refuge. The place where it all began between me and Leon. 
Harold Dexner. A scientist with vital information for the war effort, according to the Foreign Office. His cover has recently been blown, which has led to this operation. Better not say anything during the briefing, but apparently Exner has a reputation for being rather hot-headed. So is he the one who was supposed to be, I don't know, escort, ex escorted <laughs> uh, to, I don't know where, safety? Switzerland. The package will be safe over Switzerland. there. Switzerland. We'll need to cross Devil's Pass with the package in order to reach Switzerland. They say it's not the most daunting pass, but still, you need to be escorted by a professional alpinist. The refuge. It'll be the departure point for our expedition into Switzerland tomorrow. An arms stash. Since the departure of Herr Gustav, resistance fighters have been using this place as an outpost. Mm. The Allies are unable to send enough supplies to the resistance fighters for them to completely let go of their good old-fashioned methods. Hmm. Shouldn't think the Brown Shadow appreciate Leon and his group throwing their own grenades at them. Oh, the piano is gone. Okay, no music. Oh, that's the radio, maybe? Where are the others? Maybe outside, maybe in the attic? Hmm. I thought the radio would be upstairs, but I guess it's here. Lenny! Is she hmm? ignoring us? What do you want? amazing how you've grown. How have you been since last time? Fine, I guess. Hmm. I found out that the refuge was closed down by the Brown Shadow a few years ago. Turns out your network did the best of it. But what about Herr Gustav? Is he... Dead? No, he's not dead. Although, for me, he might just as well be. It's quite incredible when I think of you and Leon fighting alongside someone who comes from so far away. Yeah. After Leon saved him during the expedition in Baltayar, Mr. Ludwig's tribe took him in during the winter months. They became inseparable, like brothers. So much so, that Mr. Ludwig insisted on coming back here with Leon. Now he's our most ferocious fighter, the terror of the brown shadow. See you later, Lenny. Okay, so she still has a thing for Leon, and that's why she's not happy to see Dana back. Mm, can't talk to him. We'll talk later, Dana.
Mm, who else is there to talk to? We'll have to cross that tomorrow. It's daunting. Not because of the crossing, though. Leon knows it like the back of his hand. No, because of what will happen between us afterwards. I know I'll have to face the fact that London won't let me stay with him once we've escorted the civilian into Switzerland. And Leon would never accept to leave his men and follow me to London as long as the war's still raging. Once again, everything seems to be against us. But at least I've seen him. At least I know he still loves me. And we'll have plenty of time to catch up when we'll leave for Baltea after the war. Or maybe not. So, best not dwell. I'll have all day tomorrow to feel sorry for myself. Hmm. There's someone here. I think he's the package. <laughs> I read Leon's network uses the old caves over there to escape from the brown shadow. That's smart. Sky's darkening. Doesn't bode well. Let's just hope it'll clear up by the morning. Oh, oops. Sorry. Devil's Pass. Once we've crossed it, getting into Switzerland shouldn't be a problem. Nothing new about these locations. I thought maybe she would say something. Oh, here. We can talk. Is everything all right, Herr Exner? You seem a little upset. If it's about your exfiltration tomorrow, I can assure you there's nothing to be worried about. Leon is the best for- I couldn't care less about tomorrow. So what is it then? It's my wife, Andrea. It's like I said to your, your goons there. I can't leave without her. Your wife? I'm sorry, Herr Ex now, but we have no orders regarding- I don't care about your orders. I'm not leaving without Andrea. Do you hear me? I won't. Maybe that's the blonde woman. You think I'm a bastard, don't you? With them. A selfish with bastard the ready to risk people's lives to recover the woman he loves. That's what you all think, isn't it? I'm afraid I don't know you well enough to have an opinion of you. Besides, I'm only here to accomplish my mission, not to judge anyone. I take full responsibility for my actions, and I expect no pity in return. But would a little understanding be too much to ask? I mean, what would you do in my shoes? Hmm? What would you do if they asked you to abandon that alpinist you seem to be so fond of for the common good, eh? Because that's what you're asking me to do with Andrea. Well, to be perfectly honest, I suppose if I were in your shoes, I would pull out all the stops to protect those who are dear to me. 
I see. Thank you, Fraulein. Well, everyone seems all right, more or less. I should get back to the radio now. Best not go too far. Okay, the radio was right here. Nothing. I should turn the radio on first. This part of the radio is used to receive messages. I need my documents so I can find the right setting. They're in a side pocket of my bag. So upstairs? <laughs> How did I miss that? Made it back from Wagen, despite the brown shadows tightening of the curfew. The hardest part was telling Franz's parents their son had been killed in the last operation. The father was especially cut up when I told him he couldn't recover his son's body. I tried to explain that Hartek buries all our fallen in the eternal snow, like in a frozen cemetery. So they become at one with the mountain and rest in peace beside the fallen brothers in arms, where there's no risk of the brown shadow ever finding them and desecrating their graves. Anyway, even though they knew Franz knew of the risks, it didn't make it any easier for them to accept his death. I tried to reason with the father, and he finally resigned himself to just asking for Franz's effects. I don't see why we would refuse, but I've never been asked this before, so what do you think? Do you think Leon would mind? Um... Personal effects in a heap. Can't be a good sign. It didn't say who wrote that letter, I think. Leon's men must have settled down in the dormitories. I didn't see the bag, the backpack. Where was it? Just like a suitcase? Not even here, <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe downstairs then. Mm. The Goran's lair. Lenny's old room. I should stay away. Yeah, Lenny seems to be pretty pissed <laughs> that Dan has back. Hmm. Well, I guess she was hoping to get uh, closer to Leon. Into stash. I doubt I'll find anything of use there to amplify the radio signal. This is the transmitter Herr Gustav told me he'd cobbled together to compensate for the wave disturbance caused by the mountains. Should be able to use it for my own radio to contact London. Once this antenna is connected, there must be a way to open it. There must be something else I can plug into it. Mm, 
Okay, I guess we're gonna use that downstairs. Gustav's old radio. I remember we spent many an evening listening to serials when I worked here that summer. Mm. So Yunta never did come back to retrieve it? Not surprising, really, I suppose. Given the fact that World War broke out. Any comments? <laughs> no, okay. Looks like so, just some uh, groceries. What a mess. Herr Gustav must have turned Junta's dark room into a storeroom after she left. Okay, where the hell is my backpack? We have that transmitter thing now. Oh, the radio, but I'm missing the documents. I think that's her backpack. Well, it was not for nothing because we picked up that transmitter and upstairs. So. It was not a waste of time. Um. <laughs> not another Morse code. Puzzle radio codes. A document establishing a correspondence between the Latin alphabet and Morse code. Okay, well, I should be a pro in Morse code by now. Top secret. In order to send a message using the radio, please use the correspondence table below. The recipient of the letter will receive their code at the frequency established by the contact code. Top secret, please follow the procedure below to contact your liaison, li liaison? Officer. Liaison, huh? Liaison. <laughs> Officer. To obtain the safety frequency, decipher the con contact code below. Please see the attached appendix. Set the resulting safety frequency on the receiver part of your device. I would like to copy paste this. Your liaison officer will then communicate on the receiver part of your device a new transmission frequency to decipher set this new transmission frequency on the sender part of your device use the handset of your device to reach your liaison office okay i have no idea what it means i'm gonna write down the that code so we have two one 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 twelve one to one to one inspect here we use the transmitter that should boost the signal perfect That item doesn't work. Uh. Nothing. I should turn the radio on first. I thought I already did that. Yes, I did. Oh, 
Oh, I don't know about the frequency. This is the receiver. This part of the radio is used to transmit messages. This part of the radio is used to transmit messages. On. Tuning frequency in. I don't know what frequency we are on. Was it in here somewhere? The appendix. Code. And the frequency. Okay. In order to send a message using the letter, please use the correspondence table below. The recipient of the letter will receive their code at the frequency established by the contact code. Please follow the procedure below to contact your liaison. Obtain the safety. Decipher the content below. Please see the attachment. This oh, I have to decipher it. Mm hmm. So I use this. Okay, so one is probably a dot, and two is a um, a dash. So the first one would be. B A R and Barn, okay. Barn is six and nine. 6.9 Okay, set the resulting safety frequency on the receiver part of your device. So there was 6,9 on the receiver part. pick up the the signal isn't strong enough i need to find a way of amplifying it oh the signal isn't strong enough i need to find a way of amplifying it uh what oh wait there was something The signal is strong enough to reach London now. I need to adjust the frequency settings properly to contact London. I need to adjust the frequency settings properly to contact London. Okay, they're sending the code now. I have to... So now we have to decipher that code again. And that would be a uh, dot dash dash dot. P. And we have only one dot. Is that? Oh yeah. P. E. Um, a dot and a dash. P. E. A. 
and then dash dot dash peak peak uh, eight point four next step um Set this new transmission frequency on the sender part of your device. Use the handset of your device to reach your liaison officer. Okay. London, come in. London, do you read me? Over. We've made contact. Package safe and sound. I repeat, we've made contact. Package... Out of the question! I'm not moving from here without her! London, please wait a moment. Over. What's going on? You! Tell London I'm not leaving without my wife. Herr Exner, listen, I... No, you listen. Andrea is my closest collaborator. With regard to the Allied war effort, she is just as important as me. She is in Wagen, as I speak, hiding at some friend's place under a false identity. You must bring her here and smuggle her into Switzerland with me. There's no way we're going back to Wagen. Brown Shadow troops have overrun the entire town. We can't risk delaying our departure. A storm coming. Danger. I'm not moving from here without her. London, did you hear that? Roger that. Over and out. They say we can't allow Frau Exner to be captured and risk her letting the cat out of the bag. What are you waiting for then? Send someone to fetch her! Hang on. You're not asking me to. Sorry, Lenny. We haven't got a choice. Ludwig can't go about in public in Wagen, and I have to prepare everything to get them through Devil's Pass tomorrow. You're the only one I trust enough to... Why can't she go? Hmm. I understand you're angry, Lenny. But that's not in my orders. My mission consists of protecting Herr Exner at all cost. I can't just leave him here and go off to Wagen. Dan is right, Lenny. And besides... And besides, it's too dangerous. Leon! I, I, I all right, then. That. I'll go. Mm. Lenny... Wait! Leon's reaction and his unconditional love for Dana drove me mad with rage. So I decided to take my revenge by making a detour. It was a detour I would regret for the rest of my life. I made a deal with the devil. No one was supposed to have gotten hurt, I promise. I promise, Fraulein. I just didn't want Leon to leave me forever. To leave with her. But it was a fool's bargain, as I should have known from the beginning.
You done more than anything in the world. Come on, let's go. <laughs> when I thought done, I was supposed to uh, escort the that egg's not gonna. Is that how she lost her legs? Not lost her leg, but. Ironic, isn't it? You got paralyzed. But the worst was yet to come. How long we fought. Enough for Leon to lead the civilians to the foot of Devil's Path. Superpower <laughs> when everyone is going dead already. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm a little confused about this. Change. Oh. Pace of the game. Oh, story. Uh, I didn't expect that. I mean, though. Ah, oh, that events are gonna take a turn like that. Hmm. Okay, and what now? Ludwig has been searching for Leon's remains since then. But it took the thaw due to global warming to uncover the bodies. And with them, my crime. Precisely when you decided to show up, Fraulein. Lenny. Dear Ludwig, can you ever for... <sighs> Mr. Ludwig, please! Don't, Fraulein. I deserve this. Let's get this over with, Fraulein. Let me tell you about the last time I ever saw Dana, and then I'll be done. Okay, I'm listening. It was a year after Leon died, just after the liberation of Vargan. Vargan Musician District, Spring 1945. Okay, well, phew, so we are slowly um, uncovering what happened uh, in the past and yeah, um, that was a long episode, um, so I'm gonna end it here. Thank you for watching and I hope I see you in the next one.